Okay, next we're going to talk about the situation of planar symmetry. Now this, i got to say, is one that I think that the book does perfectly well. So if you want to skip this segment and go on to the next one, that would be absolutely fine. This is done in the book on page 361. But if you'd rather hear me talk about it, just watch the rest of this video. So we're thinking about, to start with, a sheet that carries some charge, and it's an infinite sheet. It's going to be infinitesimally thin. So in this direction, in the vertical direction, it's infinitesimally thin, but it's infinite in the x and y directions, and it carries some uniform charge that's distributed evenly over the sheet. The charge density, we call it sometimes the surface charge density, and the symbol that is always used to represent surface charge density is the Greek letter sigma, and it would have units of coulombs per meter squared. Okay, so again, we find our we use our multi-step procedure. Um, <clears throat> we know that the, the from arguments that we made before, based on the symmetry of the situation, that the electric field will point uh, when you're on this side of the the surface of the top side, the electric field will point up. On the bottom side, it's going to point downward, like this. And we've already made the argument, just based on considerations of the field lines, that the electric field cannot depend on distance away from the surface. OK, next, we need to cleverly choose our Gaussian surface. So in this case, again, we want to find the electric field, let's say, at, at this point here, which is a distance z above our surface. So I want my my Gaussian surface to include that point as part of the Gaussian surface. So I will choose a cylinder, and I'm going to have the point of interest be on the end cap of the cylinder. This is a situation where there are a couple of two different good choices of the cylinder that you could choose. I'm going to choose the one that's symmetrical. So I'm going to make my cylinder pass through the sheet of charge and go an equal distance away on the other side. So this is, this is a, a also a distance z. So it goes a distance z above my sheet of charge and also a distance z below the sheet of charge. OK, so the next step is to break the surface up into the different pieces and figure out the flux. In this case, the electric field is parallel to the curved sides and perpendicular to the two end caps. So that means that the total flux is going to be the flux through the top plus the flux through the bottom. And maybe I could say plus the flux through the curved side. But that one is going to go to 0 because on that curved side, the electric field is perpendicular to the area vector. Right On this curved side, the area vector would point outward like this. I should say that that's d vector a. The electric field is perpendicular to d vector a. On the top, the d vector a points upward. And so on the top, e is parallel to d vector a. On the bottom, the d vector a points downward. And so on the bottom, the electric field points downward. So on the bottom, it's also true that the electric field is parallel to d vector a. So putting that all together, that means that the integral over the closed surface is equal to the integral over the top of e times dA plus the integral over the bottom of e times dA. <clears throat> now, one of you asked in the Mastering Physics, why is it that we choose a cylindrical uh, Gaussian surface in this case? And in fact, it doesn't matter. I could have chosen a, a surface that has square cross-section, or some rectangular cross-section, or even a star-shaped cross-section. It really doesn't matter as long as it has a face that's 
the, the face like this is parallel to the electric field and a top and a bottom cap that have the same area and are perpendicular to the electric field. It doesn't matter what shape you, you choose. Okay, what's the next step? Evaluating can I take the electric field out of the integral? And in this case, we know that the electric field at all points, let's say on this bottom surface, is the same. The electric field at all points on the top surface is the same, so I can take it out. So this becomes the electric field on the top times the integral over the top surface of d vector a plus the electric field on the bottom times the integral over the bottom surface of dA. I think I said d vector a here, but I really just meant dA. We're, so far, we're formally allowing the strength of the electric field at the top and the bottom to be the same. But in fact, by the symmetry, we can tell that the strength of the electric field at the top must equal the strength of the electric field at the bottom. The surface integral over the top would just be the area of the top. I don't know what the area of the top is, so I'm going to make up a symbol. I'm going to say that this cylinder or uh, square or star shape or whatever it is, the area of the top has an uh, area of A. So I'm going to call that A. The sides have to be vertical, and so the bottom, the integral of the bottom, has to have that same value. These two electric fields have to be the same, so when I put it all together, this is the flux is equal to 2e times a. And again, the factor 2 comes from the fact that I'm, I've got some flux coming out this top one and some coming out the bottom one. The next step is finding the net enclosed charge. So that would be the charge in this part of the surface, where the surface kind of cuts through the sheet. It encloses some charge here. So the Q net enclosed is equal to sigma times the area. Finally, we use Gauss's law to find the electric field. So we set the flux to Ea equal to the net enclosed charge, sigma A divided by epsilon naught because of Gauss's law. We cancel that A. And it's like canceling the factor of L in the cylindrical example. That A, that's just a mathematical thing. It can't matter, and so it's a good thing that we can cancel it out. And so this gives us that the electric field due to an infinite sheet is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And it does not surprise us now that there's nothing involving the height of our cylinder Z. That is, there's nothing that depends on distance away from the sheet because we already knew that the electric field was going to turn out not to depend on distance. But now we have an expression for the strength of that field.